Upstream dams are the major concern for fisheries sustainability. On the other hand, the impact of small-scale built structures around the lake on fisheries is not significant at present in 2006. The impact of floodplain roads is not significant regarding to uh, fish species abundance and fish species composition. In Passat, for example, the villages give a variety of reasons for the decline in fish abundance, but built structures were not cited. In summary, roads are felt to provide substantial benefits to locals and to provide new fishing opportunities exploited by fishers. However, the long-term impact of these roads, which compartmentalise floodplains and ultimately shrink the habitat accessible to fish, is known to be quite significant in some other floodplains around the world. A key factor is the way roads are designed and the attention paid to maintaining the hydrological connectivity for a given road. In Stung Chinat, the irrigation scheme has resulted in different effects upstream and down the river. Upstream, effects on fisheries are considered positive in the short term because of increased fish abundance in the permanent body of water created. However, the scheme is too young for an assessment of its long-term impact on fish migrations across the Chinat River and the changes in species composition. Within the scheme, people have benefited from increased rice production. Downstream, villages blame flow changes for reduced fish abundance and smaller catches. However, fish are sometimes easily caught as they congregate in small, shallow habitats along the riverbanks, as shown by this group of fishes. Overall fish migrations to and from the Tonle Sap Lake are at risk of being blocked. And a common belief is that fish abundance, species diversity and household catches are generally declining. However, it is difficult to blame only the built structure, since various other factors also contribute to this situation, such as increased fishing pressure, illegal fishing, and the use of destructive gear. In conclusion, large-scale structures in the Mekong system and upstream developments appear clearly as a dominant threat to Tonle Sap fisheries. This calls for Cambodia's strong involvement in regional negotiations in order to defend its important fish resources. At the local scale, the assessment shows mixed impacts of local structures on hydrology and fisheries. In fact, the impact of a given structure largely depends on its design and the way it's managed. The structure should be designed to take into account ecological requirements. Good design and management of built structures is a vital necessity for the Tonle Sap Lake, in which 296 fish species have been identified, making it the third richest lake in the world in terms of biodiversity. In 2006, the value of fisheries and other aquatic resources of the Tonle Sap were estimated at $233 million a year. The average income in households amounted to $470 a year. As the population grows, fishing pressure is also intensifying. Since 1940, the population has tripled and the catch per person has plunged. With fewer big species being caught, the average quality of the catch is also declining. In particular, catches are increasingly dominated by smaller, short-lived species of less value. In the area studied in Pusat province, villagers cited the main benefits of new roads as access to public services and markets. Easy market access is especially significant for fish as this resource is difficult to reserve. We ask 
how important it is build structure in this project. Happened that this build structure is road, and he's told us that road is the blood vein. So that is something that we remember of it. Better market access has also increased the incentives to produce goods sold in markets and boosted local trade in fruit, cattle, poultry and medical supplies. As a consequence, the contribution of fishing to average household incomes has declined in all villages surveyed. Fishing is still the main source of income in some villages, but has been eclipsed by rice farming in other villages. After a road has been constructed, Incomes tend to rise much more sharply in richer households than in poor households. Clearly, richer households are more capable of taking advantage of the potential benefits of new built structures. Social and cultural factors influence who benefits more from built structures. In Passat, for instance, a study found that an ethnic Cham village benefited more from a new road than Khmer villages because of more connections with other villages and a better institutional redistribution of the income brought by the road. Stung Chinit Reservoir provides an important new fishing ground close to some villages but has also flooded some rice fields. Fishermen in upstream areas believe that the reservoir can become a productive fishing ground but they are concerned that this gain might not be sustainable. In conclusion, studies about the various kinds of built structures show that rural households have different capacities to benefit from opportunities arising from infrastructure development. Road development in the province studied has led to a sharp decline in the percentage of people living in poverty but the chronic poor generally did not benefit from these developments. Around the irrigation scheme studied, the poorest households became more affluent but remained below the poverty line.